This is Honda's 11th generation Honda Accord. Uh, this is the touring package in Canyon River Blue. So this is a hybrid model. They offer the standard turbocharged engines in the LX and the EX trims. And then hybrid is available in the Sport EXL, Sport XL, and Touring models. So this one is a Touring. They have widened the rear stance by just under a half inch for more stability as well as a better stance. Um, this car is also, I believe, 2.8 inches longer than the previous models. One cool feature and trick that uh, they have on this is to get better access for the back of the engine. You can lift this up and it has a spot here. So your hood is almost 90 degrees to the, to the engine bay, which is really, really cool. Debuting their fourth generation two motor hybrid electric system. It uses a pair of electric motors that are mounted side by side. It also has an all new two liter Atkinson cycle, four cylinder engine using direct fuel injection. This allows them to use a larger propulsion motor for increased torque output. The combined system output is advertised as 204 horsepower. Traction motor peak torque is 247 pound feet of torque, which is up 15 pound feet from previous models. This hybrid model does not have a transmission. It's a direct drive and uses the electric motors and only engages the gas engine above like 40 or 45 miles an hour. It's also worth noting that your 12 volt battery is in the front here. Some of them have them in the back. I think Toyota does and some others, but here it's in the front uh, in your engine bay. Back at the vehicle here, we have, um, you have your reverse camera, which was kind of blurry to be honest. Um, and then your release latch is right here. There is no key access for the trunk hatch. Um, they do have a way to access it through, uh, I don't know if I can see through the glare here, through that hatch, you can press the side of it and it will pop open. Then you can pull your key out by pressing that button, whoops. And it'll pop out of the side here. Then you can take your key Maybe. And if you can wrap your head around there and actually see, which is quite difficult, once you get it in there, you twist it and it will open the trunk for you. Pop the trunk up. You can also release it from inside on the driver's side. It does open uh, pretty high. I never found myself hitting my head on it, which was nice. Uh, inside, it's extremely spacious uh, and quite deep. The, uh, under the floorboard here, this one came with just a uh, flat fix kit and a funnel. Um, and this is just a foam insert that looks like it had the ability to put a spare tire in here. But this one does not come with one. Uh, it does have two grocery bag hooks here in the sides. One there, one there. They do nothing else. I have no idea what this cable does. There was a question about what it did. I have no idea. To release the back seats, you can lay them down. You pull them here, but they don't pop down. There's also no way to release them from inside the car. So it does hold if you pop it and then lay them down. So you lay it down, but it does not fold completely flat. You do have you do have a bump there, um, but it does give you a way to pass through to the cabin. Um, while we're on the topic of the back seats, uh, they have latches in the back. Hopefully you can see that through the glare for car seats. Uh, there are three rear anchors. Um, and then inside there are two latch positions. There's one on this seat and one on that seat, nothing for the middle. To access them, you do have to pull these flaps out of the way, and then you can access the car seat latches. Um, putting them back isn't terribly difficult, but if it matters to you and 
you want it to look nice. These do get kind of wrinkly and weird sometimes. Um, they also have cup holders in the back. So you have an armrest with two cup holders that rests flat on the back of the seat so it's not being suspended, which is really, really nice. Rear seats also offer heated seats for your passengers in the rear. One thing that's really nice is the rear seats are extremely roomy. There is a lot of space. This is with the seat pushed all the way back and I still have quite a bit of room between me and the seat in front of me. I'm six foot two. Um, you have heated seats back here, like I mentioned before. Passengers also have air and two USB ports uh, for charging. They do not connect to the radio. The headliner is a little low for me, but overall it's quite roomy back here. I think you could fit three adults back here comfortably and have a good drive. One oddity back here is this back seat is fully flat um, and it's the same material that's the front. So they didn't use hard plastic on the back. It's still the soft. Um, but then this passenger seat, the back of it has a storage pocket. I don't know why there's only one on one side and not on the other. So let's talk about driver area layout and some of the features of this car. Space wise, I feel like I have quite a bit of space. I have kind of large feet, but I have plenty of room between the gas and the brake. I don't feel like I'm getting hung up on the brake while I'm trying to press the gas pedal, which is really nice. Um, I love that they implemented a standard shift lever and that the cup holders are off to the side of that lever. So it doesn't get in your way when you are trying to maneuver in a parking lot or even just get out of your garage. I really love that the climate control is all actual buttons. Um, there's feedback when you press them. They do have little tiny screens inside of each of the knobs. So as you twist them, they will actually change the readout that's inside of them. It'll tell you the temperature you have it set at, if it's on auto or not. Vents up here are um, on these selectors that I've, that are new to me. Um, but you have a vent here and a vent here, and then you have one on each side for um, the edges. The stereo has an actual volume control with a button in the middle to turn it on and off. It's great when you need to hit it in a hurry to hear something. Uh, drive up windows, things like that. It's, it's really nice. I love having a physical button for that and an actual knob. As far as steering wheel controls, you have your uh, kind of car controls on the right side here, cruise control, which is adaptive and radar controlled. So on the right side of the steering wheel, we have our cruise control settings. Turn on and off your adaptive cruise control here, cancel it, settings. Um, you also can adjust your follow distance and turn on or off lane keep assist. This is a dial and a button. It controls the gauges and the display on the right side of your gauge cluster. And on the left side, we have our media controls, skip tracks, preset selection up top, Volume is this toggle switch, which is similar, same style as the cruise control toggle. You have a voice command button and your selector wheel, which also you can push in to select whatever source you would like to use for your media. So in this touring edition of the Honda Accord, they have included a 10.2 inch digital driver instrumentation display. We also have our 12.3 inch color touch screen that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The 12.3 inch is available on the Sport EXL, Sport L, and Touring trims. The other trims have a standard seven inch touchscreen, also with Apple CarPlay and Android Audio. Honda has also integrated Google into this car for the virtual assistant, as well as um, navigation and maps. So we'll go through the menu options we have on the uh, gauge cluster here. So on the right side, you can, your option is navigation. It will show you your turn by turn directions when you're navigating to a location. So here you have speed and time and you have two sets of uh, trip settings. You have a trip A and a trip B and it will show you how much time you have had spent as well as distance traveled. Um, the next one is range and fuel. I think when we got this with a full tank of gas, we had over 500 miles of range, which was pretty awesome. And we've been averaging right around 42 miles per gallon, according to the computer in the car. You can also from here see your, uh, your trip odometer 
and you can change it by pressing in the selector button. You have power flow so you can see what your battery and engine are sending power to each as well as the charge. Um, they do have settings. You can go in here and change and modify both of these gauges. You can turn on or off traction control, stability, and from here you have settings to modify your heads-up display. This is one thing I was a little frustrated with when I first got in because for where I sit it was cutting off the top of the heads-up display. It was a little bit crooked. They give you options to change all of those, which is really, really nice, especially if you're bothered by things that aren't lined up straight. You can change the brightness of your gauge cluster from here, um, and you can also get rid of it. They do have different options for, you can see your safety support system. You can turn on and off any of those safety features. Vehicle maintenance updates. I will show you when somebody is sitting in any of those positions in the car and whether or not their seat belts are fastened. You have the ability to change the gauge design. So you can change it to a round gauge. I don't know if it's going to show me much. Uh, you can change it to a bar. You can go to a round minimal or a bar minimal or a minimal minimal. And then it opens everything up and just shows whichever you have on those screens. On the left side, it is just a selector for your entertainment system. So you can choose what source is playing. Alexa is not enabled on this one. I believe that's a feature that um, you subscribe to. Then on the right side, it shows your fuel and left side shows your battery charge. All right, talking about the entertainment center here, infotainment. Um, from the home screen, you do have this little sidebar, which will show you what audio you're playing. It will show you your compass. You can change this to be a clock um, or your power flow, which is kind of cool um, when you're on this home screen. And then it is fairly responsive. I did notice in Apple CarPlay, when you skip tracks, it does take a second for the audio to catch up to that switch. There's a little bit of a lag. Um, it's enabled with Honda Link, which feels like they're still kind of working out the kinks on that. It's not as feature rich as some of the other platforms, but it does show you maintenance and other updates on your vehicle. Uh, you can have AT&T enabled, so you have Wi-Fi hotspot inside your car. You can adjust your vehicle settings from here. Um, one thing that was a little, that, that took a little bit of learning for me was when you're in these menus, you can't go back by hitting anything here. You have to hit the back button that's all the way over here. Um, that took me a second and it's just a quirk that I had to learn as I was using it. Um, you can also change the color of your vehicle so that it matches your car. One weird thing is it doesn't seem to hold. Um, I've done it a couple times and it always comes back to that white car. Riding on the freeway, interior noise is about what you'd expect. Um, it, I have been in quieter and then it could be a lot louder. So it's pretty middle of the road um, as far as road noise goes. It handles really well. Uh, the steering is responsive and tight. Um, in sport mode, it, it does tighten things up just a little bit more, and it sounds cool when you're getting on the freeway in sport mode. Uh, it's kind of a fun sound. The adaptive cruise control will also show you on the right. Um, it'll show you relative to what you have your cruise set at, um, whether you're going at your cruise speed or below um, with that green line. The green arrow is where your, your cruise control is currently set at. And then the red is indicates the speed limit that is that the car is recognizing for that stretch of road. I have noticed in this Honda that it isn't always accurate. Um, at times it just disappears because it either doesn't know or the map's not updated. It could also be because the car isn't currently connected to um, the cellular network. 
I am connected to my phone, but it doesn't seem to be able to use that as a reference to pull data in. All right, zero. Ready? Yep. And go. Flat footed. Okay, we're in sport mode. Um, and here we go. On. No difference. No difference whatsoever. Uh, slower. It was 9.11. So there's one other thing on there that could affect it, and it's the battery. So if the battery's oh, more full, it'll yeah. give you more power. So. The first one we did have more battery than the second one, but I don't know if that was the reason or not. And it's funny too because it played a different sound. The engine sounded different in sport mode than normal. Interesting. So, and I've noticed some vehicles do that. Sometimes it's just louder, but this one it was like a deeper tone, which was interesting. So, that's that's wild. I, it's yeah. So did you feel the shifting? Is it? Oh, no, I wasn't even focusing on that. Just for five yeah, that sounds good. I'm gonna go to the back to normal. Okay, here we go. Oh, weird. Really weird. Yeah. So, what is a car without a transmission? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. Like it's shifting. Because that's like a full on shift. It's not even yeah. like a. I'm sure they programmed it in to act that way. All right, in summary, uh, I've really enjoyed driving this. Um, it's a really great car will be great for some wonderful road trips the bose premium audio system is has been really good um the hands-free calling is actually quite amazing the people i've called from this car have said on their end when speaking to somebody on a hands-free vehicle system especially a stock built-in one this is probably one of the most pleasant experiences they've had. Uh, the audio is clean, the background noise is almost non-existent, um, and that can be said for the person in the car as well. The audio is clean, it sounds good, I don't feel like I'm straining to hear or understand what the person on the other end is saying. And to be honest, I found myself a little more relaxed on conversations in this car just because the experience was so good so hats off to honda for that um, they, they really did a great job the ride in here is wonderful i, I would definitely road trip in this um, and it's plenty spacious for traveling with adults or older children um, it's also a great commuter car even with the aggressive driving we've done, starts and stops, um, some of the testing that we have done with it, we're still averaging about 42 miles to the gallon. And that's just amazing for me. It's responsive, it's sporty, and it's what I would expect a Honda Accord to be. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures review of this 2023 Honda Accord Touring Edition. Oh, please leave us comments. We love them. Uh, I've learned a lot about features on some of these vehicles that we may have missed through the comments you post. Also, if I got something wrong, please forgive me. Let me know what I missed or what I was misinformed on. Um, and we do try to be as accurate as we can. However, I'm still learning a lot of this and I'm excited to be along for this ride. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're updated whenever we post new videos, and we'll see you on the next one.